It's a lovely try from Gloucester to go coast to coast through seven phases, so let's break it down. Middle of the field, Gloucester load 4-2 and two with Bristol instantly at a disadvantage due to dropping their back three deeper for the kick. If you can try and keep an eye on Wade's work rate in this try, do. It's excellent. It's a fantastic example of how to stay involved without even touching the ball. Now Gloucester play and the Batoye races up to cut off the wide channel and with Bristol drifting and holding off, Gloucester take the right decision to step back against the grain and set a ruck. It's a great choice as they've now created options. They've made 20 metres or so and now can continue to play down the blind or have set a great position to exit their half. Mercer and Clement are a bit static and we can see in behind there's no real shape to cross his attack. So Mercer takes contact and watch how he fights to stay on his feet and alive and not give up the ruck until he's ready to. The end result is Bristol have seven players around the ruck, which is half the team. And while that's a similar number for Gloucester, they also have the advantage of being able to focus purely on space and set up to attack it, whereas Bristol's focus has to be on the ball. Now we can see Gloucester starting to adopt their shapes. We have the pod in behind a second wave of attackers. And watch Harris and Ainscombe here and how hard they work to get around the corner and back into the attack for the next phase. Similarly, watch Wade just tracking the ball, but also being patient and not injecting himself just for the sake of it. It's intelligent wing play. I think here, personally, the long pass from Nainscombe is the wrong option. Perhaps the pass to Barton would have maybe engaged Janser van Rensburg a little bit better, or similarly, a holding unders line would have maybe interested him, and that would have stopped him from falling off and being able to chase down Clewellyn. Regardless, Gloucester keeps soaking up the phases, and they play a 3-2 shape off of Nainscombe. Also, look at how late Atkinson leaves his run. He's almost in tandem with the ball, and that allows Mercer just to give the little pops pass for Atkinson to hit at speed, accelerating into the gap. Now Williams is isolated and he's backing off, is what's given Atkinson the gap. But watch what he does once he turns. The line he takes now hardly works to stay between Atkinson and Wade to cut off that pass. And that allows Ibatoye to focus just on Atkinson and kill that particular attack. It's a great offload to Mercer, who in turn offloads to Wade. And here we see the power of Wade as he stops, steps back from the tackle and then accelerates again to fix the outside defender, all in the space of two, three feet. And as the ruck emerges, we can see Gloucester's depth off the ball. Now, I'm a huge fan of depth and attack. Throughout this game, Bristol played a very flat attack, even with these stacked formations, whilst Gloucester, on the other hand, kept the depth. Now, there are advantages to both, but here we see the advantage of depth is that the support runners can see what the defence is doing and react to it. Thomas holds his depth, reads the gap, and takes a beautiful pass from, I think, Rivers. And like any good nine, Williams is following the play, and links with Taylor, who... Don't forget was on the ground in the last ruck. He then connects again with Thomas to send him over. Brilliant, simple, draw and pass to finish off a flowing seven-phase strike.